Good morning, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread devotional and scripture song broadcast for the seventh day of August, and it is Monday, and so welcome. Uh, and uh, today's topic is titled Summer Decline. And so before we get started on that and the scripture song, I'll welcome you, as always, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And if he's not your Lord and Savior today, well, he wants to be. He's seeking your face and wants you to be saved. And so hope you'll come to trust him as your Lord and Savior today. And if you are saved and uh, having some struggles and need some encouragement, well, um, hopefully this broadcast will be a help and a blessing to you in some way. So praise the Lord. And we're going to start with today's scripture song, which is from Isaiah 6, verse 8. So press play and we'll sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. Uh, here we go. Amen. Isaiah 6, 8. And also, I heard, heard the, the voice of the Lord, Lord saying, saying, Who shall, shall I send, and who will go for us? Then and said I, Here am I, send me. Also, I heard, heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send, and who will go for us? Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, said I, here am I, send me. Then said I, here am I, send me, send me. Send me. That's right, so are you willing to be sent? Amen. Of course, we know that's uh, Isaiah that uh, the Lord is um, speaking to, and um, then he answers the call. So will you uh, go where the Lord wants you to go and say, Here I am, here am I, send me, as Isaiah said in um, that uh, chapter. So Hopefully so, and and uh, if you're willing to be sent, well, don't uh, get uh, all murmury when the Lord says, "Well, I want you to go here," and you're like, "Well, I don't want to go there," <laughs> right? So when when He's calling for us and wants to send us somewhere certain, and you say, "Here am I, here am am I," and send me, and make sure you're willing to be sent to that specific place where the Lord wants you to go, right? So, Amen. Okay, now it's time to get into today's topic. For Monday, August 7th, titled The Summer Decline. And let me read you the passage here. And it's from 2 Corinthians 6 14b. And it says, What fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? 2 Corinthians 6 14b. And let's go back and read the rest of that because there is context with this. So, 2 Corinthians. All right, Second Corinthians, <clears throat> and what was it? Six, chapter six, and let's go back there. And what was it? Chapter no, so fourteen. All right, so fourteen. So it starts here, and the first part of verse fourteen says, "Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers." So we are not to be unequally yoked with together with unbelievers so not to be hanging out and doing things with, with those that are lost and unbelieving and uh, this can go for those that are saved and don't want to walk with the Lord and don't want to go the way the Lord wants them to go so those uh, carnal Christians as we call them <laughs> so and don't be a carnal Christian make sure you're walking the right way so <clears throat> and don't follow those that are not and of course certainly don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers it says, For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? And it goes on here in verse 15, And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. So if you're saved, you're the temple of the living God. So we should live like it and not uh, allow these things into our uh, minds and thoughts and hearts amen because we are uh, 
temple of the living God, and it says, As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And verse 17 says, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. So, amen. And then, of course, Romans. Let's go to Romans really quick. Romans chapter 12. And read that. So, that kind of ties along with this. So it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, talking to saved people, by the mercies of God, that we that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Right? So, and verse 3 says, For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. So, all right. And now let's get into the topic here. <clears throat> and, uh, for this um, 7th day of August, titled Summer Decline. And the author is C.S. I believe that's Chris Staub. And let's see, where is he at? He's down here at the bottom. I see he's the pastor of Silvery uh, Lane Baptist Church in Dearborn Heights, Michigan. So let me read you what he wrote. And he writes here, we are in the summertime days of no school, vacation, and hot weather. And that's about to end here soon because school's about to start back up here in a week or two, at least here in Florida anyway. <clears throat> so he says we're in the middle of summertime and, and soon it'll be fall before you know it. And he says there is a danger of neglecting one's walk with God during these days, right? Because we all want to do summer things and neglect our walk with the Lord and go on vacation and all that stuff and do things that um, are not necessarily sinful but just time wasting and unless you're uh, you know nothing wrong with going out and looking at God's creation and stuff and enjoying it but uh, make sure we're not uh, not neglecting the Lord and the things of the Lord so says so there's a danger of neglecting one's walk with God during these days consider some of the dangers that need to be considered in the summer so here's some of the summer dangers and there's uh, six of these so if you like to take notes um, here is the six um, things that we need to consider in the summer the dangers number one is planning a vacation or activity that will cost too much money and then justifying the expense <laughs> right so <clears throat> and uh, so there's that it says two forgetting or ignoring your tithe and mission offerings while you're away so um, and and uh, of course that means giving so making sure you're not neglecting your giving to the Lord and the, the work of the Lord and mission uh, mission offerings and all that and then number three neglecting to plan carefully for church attendance these days you must diligently check out the church or churches you plan on attending missing worship services is dangerous <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. So, right. So, when you're on your vacation, making sure that you're looking for those churches that you can go to so you don't miss out on that and neglect that. And then number four says, going somewhere that dress, music, and atmosphere would be dead wrong. Most amusement parks are filled with uh, more than amusement. Uh, what do you uh, want impressionable young minds to see? So, making sure... If you're going someplace like a theme park or or um, amusement park, that you're um, nothing wrong with going there and riding rides and all that stuff, and making sure that you're um, not uh, not uh, getting your uh, minds and hearts on things that shouldn't see, and and what do you want your um, kids to see and all that, and impressionable youthful minds to see. So there's that, and then number five, neglecting time with your family. In regard to prayer and devotions, change in routine should not change in spiritual matters. And then number six, spending time with relatives that include negative influences. Hmm. So, <clears throat> all right. So those are the things that are dangerous. And that can be not just during the summertime, but any time of the year. 
So let's take heed of these things. And again, of course, nothing, nothing uh, wrong with uh, going on vacation and doing things and making sure we're not neglecting uh, things of the Lord and not uh, going places we shouldn't be going and all that. So, all right. And then he uh, continues on here after the six things. He writes, uh, these are just a few dangers to consider during the summer and, of course, any time of the year. It says Balaam was paid by the king of Moab to curse the children of Israel. God wouldn't let the prophet complete that curse. However, Satan used the Moabites to corrupt Israel by simply inviting them to fellowship, eat and amuse themselves with the deeply ungodly and wicked Moabites. Your vacation and your family are not worth the price. So, <coughs> amen. All right, so let's take heed to these things. And, uh, okay, so that was a good little topic there. And now let's get into the Daily Strength, Volume 1 book, as we're starting a new week. Started yesterday with the introductory stuff. And this is um, week 27 on humility. And there'll be two weeks of this, week 27 and 28. And today is Monday, day eight, uh, 184, titled, What is Humility? And we have Isaiah uh, chapter 2, verses 9 and verse 11. So it says here in Isaiah ch uh, chapter 2, verse 9, And the mean man boweth down, and the great man humbleth himself. Therefore, forgive them not. And in Isaiah 2, 11, The lofty looks of man shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed low, or excuse me, bowed down. So, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. So and that was Isaiah 2 verses 9 and 11. Now introductory thoughts. It says here our previous studies have discussed the Bible's built-in dictionary. Interestingly, the discovery of this method of defining words is not new. In fact, men like King James uh, the sixth, also known as King James the first, commented on God's graciousness concerning his word. He pointed out that the definitions of many Bible words could be found by considering surrounding words. So that's what he said. And then it says John uh, Eady, E-A-D-I-E, -E, explains this in his book, The English Bible, uh, Volume 2, London, uh, Mac Macmillan, uh, 1876, page 1, 91 and he says here in this book our study in humility is a case in point the true riches of this word can only be gleaned when one considers some of the words used in close proximity of the uh, word hum uh, the word humble along with its variations uh, these words include crouches uh, psalm 10 10 lowly for proverbs 16 19 Bow it down, Isaiah 2, 9. Bow it down, again, Isaiah 2, 11. Brought down, Isaiah 5, 15. Hewn down, Isaiah 10, 33. And abased, Luke 14, 11. And Luke 18, 14. So, um, these are the variations of the word humble <clears throat> here. And then continuing, I says, God wants the Bible student to understand the depths and riches of his word and words. In this case, he clearly indicated that humility results from one being brought low, right? So being brought low and, and uh, let us decrease and let the Lord increase. Amen. So that was introductory thoughts. Now devotional thoughts. Uh, and this is for children. And of course, you can apply this in some ways to adults. And it says here for children, for the devotional thoughts, it says, what can you do? What can you do well? This is the question. Sing, quote Bible verses, or draw. Uh, do you do these things so others will notice and brag on you? <laughs> Hopefully not. The Lord blesses you with the ability to do certain things so that you can please Him and help others in the process. But don't do it to to be bragging on yourself. <clears throat> but be humble when you're doing these things, like singing and quoting Bible verses or drawing or whatever your talent is that the Lord has given you. And that can go for both kids and adults. And now for everyone, it says the Bible reveals that humility is the opposite of pride. 
Therefore, no one can be both proud and humble simultaneously. That's the truth. Would you classify yourself as one who has a problem with pride or one who recognizes the importance of humility? What are some areas of your life where pride tends to rear its ugly head? <laughs> yeah. Uh, what should you do when you sense that you are being overtaken with pride? Um, get rid of it as quick as possible. <clears throat> uh, and then prayer thoughts. It says, ask the Lord to help you focus on areas where you are proud so that you can humble yourself before him. And ask the Lord to begin a work of humility in your heart. And then the hymn from the book is titled, is You're All on the Altar. So it's good to be humble and not not being um, fake, not that fake humbling, but real humility. <clears throat> so good stuff there. All right, so that is the end of the daily strength. So that is what humility is. So let's learn to be humble and not get uh, prideful in those areas that you're being prideful. Let's make sure we work on those. And I know that even for myself, talking to myself there too. <laughs> so... <clears throat> All right, good, uh, good devotionals today, and now let's get into the hymns. And the first hymn is titled "Oh May I Never Forget," and this is hymn 458 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book, another testimony of salvation hymn, a spiritual song, written by Samuel Stennett, uh, 1727 to 1795, and Ananias Davison, 1780 to 1857. And so there's seven stanzas here, so press play and we'll uh, listen to the instrumental first. See if it's easy to sing along with. If not, I'll just read you the stanzas. So here we go. <clears throat> Sounds a little challenging, I'll try it though. Come ye that fear the Lord, and this is why I tell how narrowly my feet escaped the snares of death and hell. Hey. How it would sound if you were to sing it. <clears throat> so I'll just read the stanzas here and then move on to the second hymn after we get through all this. So, again, stanza one says, Come ye that fear the Lord and listen while I tell how narrowly my feet escaped the snares of death and hell. The flattering joys of sense assailed my foolish heart while Satan with malicious skill guided the poisonous dart. I fell beneath the stroke, but fell to rise again. My anguish ro roused me into life, and pleasure sprung from pain. Darkness and shame and grief oppressed my gloomy mind. I looked around me for relief, but no relief could find. At length to God I cried. He heard my pla uh, plaintive sigh. He heard, and instantly he sent salvation from on high. My drooping head he raised, my bleeding wounds he healed, pardoned my sins, and with a smile the gracious pardon sealed. Oh, may I ne'er forget the mercy of my God, nor ever want a tongue to spread his loudest praise abroad. Uh, praise the Lord. Good hymn there. <clears throat> Now let me read you the story here at the bottom. It says, uh, speaking of these lines, um, biographer William Jones recounts the following. So this uh, bi biographer William Jones recounts the following. We are not in possession of the circumstances attending uh, Dr. Uh, Stennett's conversion, but it is apparent that he was called by the grace of God to a saving knowledge of the truth in early life and it is uh, pro it is probable 
that the following hymn, which he composed, contains some allusions to this event. Hmm. Amen. Uh, the observant hymno hymnologist uh, will uh, note that while redeemed at a young age, Samuel still recognized the depths of his guiltiness before the Almighty and the riches of grace to receive and heal the darkest hue of sin. Hmm. So, just because you're saved doesn't mean you don't uh, that you're not um, un that you're not sinless, because uh, the body of flesh is still sinful, and so we still got to contend with this um, body of uh, sinful flesh, even though our soul is uh, saved. That doesn't mean that you can't be tempted and go into sin, and we're uh, sinners saved by grace. If you're um, trust in Jesus Christ, you're still a sinner, but you're saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, and you can still be tempted, and you can still um, walk away from the Lord and still sin, and so we got to be careful of that, that we're not living in defeat every day, but making sure we get the victory and over sin, and with the temptation, there's a way of escape, as it says in the Bible, so let's take heed of that. If you're one that thinks that, that you don't have sin anymore, that you're uh, fooling yourself, so right so let's make sure that we're understanding that okay so now move on to the second hymn here and uh do this one is your all on the altar so we'll find the instrumental for this one hopefully there is one there should be so is your all on the altar this one up there we go <clears throat> Try this first one, excuse me. Sorry about that. I gotta get through this ad here. <laughs> Alright, let's turn this back up. Alright, so the second one is, is You're All on the Altar. And this is Hymn 740 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. And this is a sub the submission of the Saint Hymn, a spiritual song written by Elisha. Uh, a. Hoffman, 1839 and 1929, and four stanzas here, and then the story at the bottom. So here we go. So along with this. You have longed for sweet peace. And for faith to increase, and have earnestly, fervently prayed. But you cannot have rest, or be perfectly blessed, until all on the altar is laid. Is your own? On the altar of sacrifice laid, your heart does the spirit control. You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body and soul. Would you walk? with the Lord in the light of his word and have peace and contentment always. You must do his sweet will to be free from all ill on the altar your all you must lay. Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your heart does the spirit control. You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body and soul. Oh, 
we never can know what the Lord will bestow of the blessings for which we have prayed. Tell our body and soul He had the fully control and are all on the altar is laid. Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your heart does the spirit control. You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body and soul. Who can tell all the love he will send from above and how happy our hearts will be made. Of the fellowship sweet we shall share at his feet when our all on the altar is laid. Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your heart does the spirit control. You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body and soul. Hmm. That's right. So let's make sure our all is on the altar. <laughs> Amen. And uh, so good hymn there. And now let me read you the story here at the bottom. It says, While not a graduate of any formal music institution, Hoffman uh, stood as a gifted a natural musician, his early impressions of melody uh, came from the Christian home attending his parents' gifted voices uh, as the family sang one or two hymns as morning or at morning and evening. The majority of Elisha's uh, works uh, bear his marks as both the giver of the hymn, uh, rhyme and the tune pastoring in Ohio for over 40 years. He holds more than 2,000 hymns and 50 hymnals in his record of labors. Hmm. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, now let me give you the references here, and then I gotta go back to the um, other um, the other uh, hymn because I forgot to give you the references for that one, so apologize about that. All right, so for uh, this uh, hymn, Is You're All in the Altar, this, uh, references are uh, stanza one is Luke seventeen five, and James five sixteen, and then Second Corinthians eight five, and then stanza two is Genesis five twenty four, John seven seventeen, and Romans six eighteen. Stanza three is Deuteronomy twenty nine twenty nine, uh, Revelation eight four, and Romans twelve one through two, which I just read it a little bit ago, and then First uh, John four ten. John 16, 22, and 2 Corinthians 5, 15 for stanza 4. And then for the refrain, we have Romans 8, 14, and Romans 6, 13. So that is the end of the second hymn. So let me jump back to the first hymn here and give you the uh, references for this one, since I didn't do so uh, earlier. So this is the first hymn, Oh May I Never Forget, uh, 458 in the hymn book. And the stanzas are... Uh, references for each stanza we have uh, uh, Psalm 66 16 and Psalm 18 5 for stanza 1 1st John 2 16 and Ephesians 6 16 for stanza 2 uh, and then for stanza 3 we have Romans 7 7 through 13 and Psalm 119 71 and then stanza 4 is Psalm 31 10 and Isaiah 48 22 stanza 5 is Psalm 18 6 and Romans 10 13 Stanza 6 is Psalm 147.3 and Ephesians 1.70.13. And then stanza 7 is Psalm 66.20 and Psalm 35.28. And that was for the first hymn. And so that is it for today's hymns. 
and put that aside and get the scripture song book again and sing these scripture songs one more time and then wrap it up for today so here we go yesterday's and then today's okay <clears throat> psalms 101 one through three I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, while I sing. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. O oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. This is good hymn. Uh, scripture song. I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with the perfect heart the oh lord will i sing i will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee O oh lord will i sing i will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee O oh lord will i sing I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. I will sing, O Lord, when I sing. I will sing of mercy and judgment. Unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. I will sing of mercy and judgment. Unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. I will sing. I will behave myself. I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. Well, I sing. <clears throat> All right, so let's make sure we're um, doing what it says here. Isaiah 6, 8. Also, so I, I heard, heard the voice of the Lord, Lord saying, Who shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Said I, here am I, send me. Then said I, here am I, send me, send me. Send me. <clears throat> Amen. Good uh, scripture song and good passage there. So, all right. So that's it for today's uh, broadcast. But before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and then the topics for the baptist bread and daily strength devotionals and then the hymns for tomorrow so tomorrow will be the eighth tuesday matthew 22 37 through 38 is the scripture song and it says jesus said unto him thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind this is the first and great commandment right so and then give you some context for that tomorrow too <clears throat> On who Jesus is speaking to. I believe it's the rich young man there. So <coughs> that's the, for tomorrow's scripture song. And then tomorrow's Baptist bread topic will be titled Trees. So this will be all about trees. And uh, 2 Peter 3 18b is the um, passage there. And 
is. So that will be tomorrow's topic on trees. So, <laughs> all right. And then the daily strength, volume one uh, topic as we're continuing through this first week of humility. And this will be day 185, Tuesday, titled, He Humbles Himself. And we have here the passages, Psalm 113, verses 4 through 6. So that will be the passages and the topic of He Humbles Himself. And then um, the song uh, will be the second hymn. It's titled, I Gave My Life for Thee. So that will be the second hymn for tomorrow. And then the first hymn will be titled, <clears throat> uh, He Brought Me Out. So that will be the first hymn, and that's hymn 459 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. Uh, another testimony of salvation hymn. And it looks like this will be the last one for those. Um, so we had quite a few of those uh, testimony of salvation hymns. And, and then the following day will be uh, help for the saint as we start in on these hymns. So, all right. So that's the last one for the testimony of salvation hymns. He brought me out. So, amen. No, no story for this one. All right, and if you want to get a copy of the hymn book and then the uh, Daily um, Strength Volumes 1 through 4 books, they're available on MelodyPublications.com is where you can get those. And then the Scripture Song book and CDs are available online at www.DailyScriptureSongs.com. That's Brother Dean and Sister Patty Runyon's website, Missionaries to Port Kaituma, Guyana. So pray for them. And uh, their latest prayer letter should be coming out here soon. So look for that. Um, Amen. All right. So that's that. And then the Baptist Bread uh, devotional book is available to order. Get a subscription going by going to uh, www.baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org. And that second website has other books available if you see something you like on that website. And then, of course, the Bible, the King James Bible, the Word of God. This is the first book we should always be getting into and reading it and studying it and seeking God's face and having him show us what he had of us to see as we're reading it and studying it and letting it sink into our hearts and minds and souls. So, amen for that. And uh, so, praise the Lord. And if you know somebody who doesn't have Facebook, you can direct them to the YouTube channel by going to Ambassador for Christ Broadcasting or typing in Baptist Bread Devotional uh, Broadcast and look me up that way. And uh, like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. And I usually uh, post these up um, after I do them live on Facebook. So check that out and send that to somebody that uh, doesn't have Facebook. So amen. And then the podcast is God's Messenger Lighthouse Podcast, where I read different heroes of the Christian faith uh, books and stories and um, missionary um, stories there. And then uh, I did, did a Bible word study uh, not too long ago. And so check that out. And that's on um, iHeartRadio and Spotify. So Praise the Lord. All right. Well, that's it for today. So if you're just joining, I encourage you to go back and watch this in its entirety. Good stuff today, as always. So God's Word's always got good things. And these um, men that uh, write these devotionals, always good stuff that they have. So amen. I encourage you to get in your Bible and read it and study it and seek God's face and what he'd have you to learn today and know and how to have a better walk with him. Praise the Lord. All right. We'll see you all, Lord willing, next time. Bye-bye for now.